Hi, I'm Dan Danford. Welcome to another episode of Money Made Easy for DadsDivorce.com. We have a question today from one of our viewers on the website. I'm trying to figure out how to invest and I've heard I need to do a cost-benefit analysis of my options. Could you explain this more and how I'm supposed to use it? Is there a formula I should be looking at? Uh, Cost-benefit analysis is actually just a way of comparing different things. And you may be able to find some place somewhere where somebody has created a particular formula for it, but that's usually not the way it's used in the investment world. Uh, I guess the most common cost-benefit analysis procedure was one that was created hundreds of years ago by Ben Franklin. Uh, he came up with a decision matrix that basically all you do is you split a piece of paper in two and on one side you write the advantages to making a decision and on the other side you write the disadvantages of making a decision. And then you compare the two sides and you make a decision. Presumably by doing this process you've considered all the different things that are important. Now, the reason it's complicated a little bit in the investment world is that there are so many different choices. And it complicates things when you aren't comparing between three or four things, but you're comparing against hundreds of things. Um, take the simplest situation. If you're just comparing a bank CD at one bank to a bank CD at the other bank, uh, you're going to write your paper and you're going to have the advantages and disadvantages of both. One may pay a higher rate of interest, um, which is an advantage, but it also may require you to tie your money up for a longer period of time, which is a disadvantage. So you have to sit down and think, you know, when might I use this money? Um, which, which choice helps me accomplish the objectives that I have? And truthfully, that's why financial planning is so important. I mean, even if you do it for yourself, it's why it's important to have a plan. Because there are all these different options out there. I mean, just think off the top of your head. You've got bank CDs, you've got money market accounts, you've got money market funds, you've got mutual funds, you've got bonds, treasury bills, notes, uh, bonds, you've got corporate bonds, you've got municipal bonds. Uh, you've got growth stocks, you've got blue chip stocks, you've got you know, any mix of, of, of these things. And the truth about which ones are best for you really is based on what your objectives are, what are your needs. And that's the reason why having a plan is important. It's because if you know what you're trying to accomplish, then that's the framework you used in the cost-benefit analysis. It's not, is this going to pay me more, or is this going to tie up my money more? It's which of these choices is going to help me accomplish my objectives best. And so uh, that's why you can't just plug numbers into a formula, is because nobody's situation is a formula. Everybody's different. Now, one thing I do want to touch on, because I think it's so, so, so important, and it's something that almost nobody talks about here, in the field of economics, there's a term we use, uh, we call it opportunity cost. And essentially, opportunity cost is what you don't get to do when you make a decision. Okay? So when you make a decision to buy a bank CD, okay, you've locked in a particular rate, and you've locked it in for a particular period of time, and the value of that investment is not going to go down. I mean, those are the three strong points about having a bank certificate. The opportunity cost, though, is that you weren't able to use that same money someplace else in a different kind of investment. Okay? Once you decide to put your money in the bank, it's no longer available for something else. Okay? And that is a key concern on most investments. It's not, and I'm not saying that you, you know, that you consider this as the most important consideration. What I'm saying is it should be a consideration on any choices you make. It's not just, did I put money into a CD, but what did I give up by doing that? 
uh, if you've watched very many of these podcasts, you know that one of the things I talk about where I'm a little bit of a contrarian has to deal with paying off your mortgage early. Okay? That, that discussion lends itself completely to this subject of opportunity cost. It's not, everybody knows that when you pay off a mortgage early, you're saving interest. And that's the number that they always talk to you about, is if you pay off this mortgage early, you'll be able to save $10,000 of interest. But what people don't talk to you about is the opportunity cost of doing that. That when you put that money towards your mortgage to save that $10,000, you had to forego the money you might have made by putting that money someplace else. And since mortgage rates are typically pretty low, there's a pretty strong argument that can be made that you might have taken that money and invested it someplace else and made more money. Okay, so if you're paying off a 4% mortgage or you're making a 6% bond, um, it's not hard to see that the opportunity cost is actually more than what you were able to accomplish. Now, this particular podcast isn't about the issue of paying off your mortgage. It's about how you build a cost-benefit analysis on different kinds of investments. And I think that doing the old Ben Franklin thing is a perfect way to do it. You know, list the advantages and the disadvantage of each option that you're considering. Take into account, you know, its potential growth, uh, how liquid your investment is, how easy it will be for you to get the money out again, um, you know, how much the fees are that are involved. I mean, that's another one. People talk to me about going to the bank because they don't have to pay fees. But, you know, if you save 1% in fees but you forego 3% of return, then that wasn't a very good choice. So list the fees of the different alternatives and look at things like that. But I want you, when you build that advantage and disadvantage table, I want you to consider the opportunity costs of making particular choices. I mean, when you decide to do something, what are you giving up by making that choice? And honestly, um, you know, go get a book, uh, go get a personal finance textbook, go do something to get objective information about different kinds of investments and then apply each one of them to Ben Franklin's table and take the opportunity cost into account. And I guarantee that you will make good choices as you go forward from there. That's it for another episode of Money Made Easy. Thanks. We'll see you again next week.